How's it going, everybody? Uh, in this second video, I'm going to be talking about, uh, I'll briefly go through the LT Spice assignment number one solution. And then in the second part, I'm going to talk about resistors as linear components. And by linear, I mean the equation V equals IR is linear because any change in current, for example, is going to have a direct change in voltage as well. So if current goes up, voltage goes up, assuming, obviously, that the resistance stays constant. And the same is true for any of the other one. Any, um, if you want to keep the voltage the same, you could change the resistance, and then the current would change as well. So I'll be talking about that. So, But first, let's talk about that LT spice assignment. Um, so right here, I have the circuit I asked you to simulate. Uh, I put in a few comments just to show you where the voltages are referenced to um, and that. But basically, if you run the dot OP, and I have that up here, you can click Simulate, Run, and it'll give me that. And now I can just hover over these components and watch in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see the DC operating point. So that's the current that's being conducted through this resistor. And that's 526 uh, microamps through R1. Through R2, it's 315 microamps. And then by KCL, we know all the current that enters this node has to leave this node. Well, it entered through R1 and R2, so it has to leave through R3. So the current through R3 should be the sum of IR1 and IR2. And in fact, we see that's true. So R3 is conducting about 842 microamps. And that's what I asked you in the last part of the assignment to prove is that uh, Kirchhoff's current law holds true. And similarly, the current that flows through here has no place to go but through this voltage source, and so the voltage source uh, is conducting minus 842 microamps. And again, that minus sign is just a sign convention because the current's going out of the positive node here. So that's pretty much it. The only thing else I asked you to do is to calculate the voltages um, across all the components. So across R1 and R2, you notice that that voltage is the same because the components are in parallel. And you can find that voltage simply by taking the top voltage, which is 10 volts, and subtracting it by the voltage at this node right here, which is 8.42 volts in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, and if you do that, you're going to find the voltage across these two resistors is about 1.58 volts. And then the voltage across R3, since your ground node is down here, is just the voltage at this node. It's 8.42 minus 0, so that's just 8.42 volts. So that's pretty much it for assignment number one. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is resistors as linear components and what that means for us in an analysis perspective. So if I go back to LT Spice, uh, so if I go back to LT Spice, you can see that I have a, oops, right here, I simulated or I designed rather an incredibly complicated resistor network. Um, I basically just placed a bunch of resistors down and connected them in all sorts of weird ways. Um, and the assumption here is that you can have a very complicated network but you really don't care what goes on in here all the time. Sometimes as a designer or as uh, when you're doing analysis for circuits, all you care about is how is the equivalent resistance of this network. And the equivalent resistance just means if I took all these resistors and just made them into one, and you know I could do that because I could calculate parallel resistance and simplify it. So for example, here R13 and R14, I could say, oh, those are just parallel, so I'll turn that into one resistor and that has a different value. Um, and then I could find some series resistors. So here R9 and R11 are in series. I could add those together. And you could simplify the circuit down. And uh, it would take you a very long time. And it probably wouldn't be worth your time just because there's a lot simpler ways to do that. So if you throw this circuit into LT Spice, there's a very interesting simulation called uh, DC Sweep. So what DC Sweep allows us to do is allows us to take a voltage source or a current source or whatever it may be. In this case, V1. So I'll say the name of the first source is V1. And I'll do a linear sweep, that's fine. So starting value, uh, I'll start at 0 volts, and then my stop value is where I want to stop. So I'll stop at 10 volts, and I'll go up at increments of 0.1 volts. So basically it'll plot a point every tenth of a volt. So if I click OK, and then I go simulate run, it'll show me a plot like this, and it probably assigns something. Um, so you can see this plot, I'm just sweeping V1 from 0 to 10 volts, like it, the name implies, and then here, what I actually want to measure is the current through the source. So if I double-click this voltage source, I can see the current through V1, the current through this voltage source up here, and I can see it as a function of the voltage um, that's being applied across this resistive network. So when I apply 0 volts, as I expect, 0 current, because if V equals 0, um, I has to equal 0 to maintain Ohm's law. Similarly, if I apply 10 volts, I get some current flowing through my circuit, and it's about uh, 531 milliamps. So, once you do this, you actually have a, you can plot for the resistance by using a simple uh, line equation, and you can say, 
R is equal to delta V over delta I, and I have that right here. So if we go down here, R equivalent, or the equivalent resistance of that really complicated network, is equal to delta V over delta I. So if I go back to my simulation, I could say, okay, my delta V is 10 volts at the very right-hand corner, and then I come across here and I say it started at 0 volts, so 10 minus 0 is my delta V. Your delta I, similarly, is minus 531 milliamps, give or take, and all the way back here it's 0. So if I plug that into my equation here, oops. So if I plug those values, the 10 volts and the 530 milliamps into my equation and do a delta V over delta I, I solve for this single resistance of just 18.848 ohms. So I can go back to LT-SPICE, and I actually did that over here. So now I just have a very, very simple circuit where I have a, that vol same voltage source and an equivalent resistance that went from this complicated network over here to this very simple single resistor network over here, just using that DC sweep analysis. So now if I want to edit that, I can now sweep V2, and again I'm going to do the same sweep, 0 to 10 at 1.1 volt increments. And I clicked OK, and simulate run, and now if I plot the current through V2, I get the exact same plot as before. So that proves that your simulation worked, and that you calculated the right resistance here. So Basically, um, this would be a very useful, you, this is a useful simulation if all you care about is what's going on in terms of the current supplied through this power supply. So instead of breaking down all these resistors by using series and parallel combinations, you can use the power of LT Spice to get you a single resistance value, and you'll be able to do it a whole heck of a lot faster than if you do it by hand. So now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is how to copy your schematic to clipboard. So let's say, for example, I wanted, and this is a real simple schematic, but let's say I wanted to grab this guy and I wanted to throw it into Word. So I can do that. Uh, I could do a print screen and then you could paste it and crop it, but the easier way would actually be to tools and copy bitmap to clipboard. But notice if you copy this bitmap, it's going to copy whatever's on this page. It's actually going to copy this gray in the background, which could be kind of ink intensive. So if you go to color tools up here and then color preferences, it'll bring up this nice handy dandy color palette editor and you can change the colors. So if I bring down selected item at the way bottom there's background and I forget if I want to go all the way right. I think I want to go to the right. So drag all these guys to the right and you can see your background turns to white. So you can click apply and now you have a white background and press OK. If I do tools, copy bitmap to clipboard and I come back here to Word I can just paste in and boom I have my circuit uh, just a white background so you won't be wasting too much ink and then obviously you know you can do your standard cropping or whatever else you want to do. You can do this for uh, plots as well so if I have you do a plot you can come to this plot and it already has a white background. Um, I believe yours will default to black so if you want to change the plot you're going to have to go to the color preferences and um, background of your plot and you want to change all these to white. So you can do that same way I did it for the circuit. Um, and then tools, copy bitmap to clipboard and then come over here into Word, and I don't know where I'm putting this, but boom, Control-V, and you have this plot, nice plot. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, the next video I'm going to be talking about how to, a um, little bit about short circuits and open circuits for next week's lab. So hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next week.